The Himalayas. Not just a huge mountain range, but also one of the world's largest water catchments and one of the least understood. We know that snow and rain go in and extensive rivers go out. But beyond that, we need more research, especially high up in the mountains. Of course, our goal is to understand the, the full hydrological cycle or the water cycle of the mountain systems, but that is, that is really difficult if you don't even have a clue of how much water comes into the system. And it's, it's really amazing if you think about it, if you think how huge the Himalayas are, that's like thousands of kilometers of mountain ranges, and there are hardly any observations above 3,000 or 4,000 meters. And so, hydrologists Walter Imazale and Joe Shea and their team of experts set up an innovative project. A chain of monitoring stations at high altitude, gathering rain and snowfall data as high as 5,000 meters along Long Tong Valley. One station recorded a total of 800 millimeters of rainfall unevenly distributed throughout the year. And you see that during winter there's almost no rain, so the line is really flat. And then in April, May, then the rains start and the line goes up a little bit. Then during monsoon the line is really steep and we have very heavy rains, almost daily. And then the, the monsoon stops by the end of the September and then the line becomes flat again. Rain is water lost to the rivers during the wet season. Snowfall, on the other hand, feeds the glaciers, providing a steady stream of fresh water before and after the monsoon. Glaciers are in balance when the snow coming in equals the meltwater going out. This line of equilibrium may retreat up the glacier with a warming climate, meaning less snow at high elevation and more melt below. And so a degree of starvation for the glacier. The result? shrinkage over time. That's important if you're a Nepalese farmer who depends on water from glacier melt during the dry season. The snow and the ice is a nice buffer. It gives you water in seasons where you don't have rain falling. Yeah, it's like, like a natural reservoir. Monitoring the water cycle of the Himalayas is challenging but important. A fifth of the world's population depends on water from this massive watershed for agriculture, industry, drinking and sanitation. Long Tong Valley, once the home of Nepalese communities at the foot of many 7,000 meter mountains. But then, in April of 2015, an earthquake struck. And when, when the earthquake happened, were you here in Kyanchi? Yeah, we are here. Yeah. Yeah. It is time we have big problem. Yeah. 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 We have all house broken, many people dry. Yeah. Very close to my family, a brother and a sister. They and were all in Long Tong yeah, when yeah, the yeah. earthquake happened. Yeah. Did you ever see an avalanche like that yeah, before? Yeah. Before, no. no. Never like this? Never, Never like this. No. The earthquake left much destruction in its wake, especially for the people of Long Tong. The science too was affected. Equipment was damaged or lost. A weather station that had worked perfectly for three years was destroyed. So we have come back up with uh, all new sensors and a new tower. And the idea is to re-establish the station so that we can have some continuity in the measurements that we're making. Walter, Joe and their fellow scientists were among the first to return to Long Tong Valley after the earthquake. Finding such destruction on their return was overwhelming. The recent past had not been kind to the people of Long Tong or to the science. But as the communities recover, so must the science. 
Understanding the glacier and the effects of climate change is important for hundreds of millions of Asians whose lives and livelihoods are influenced by what goes on high up in the Himalayas. It's important to continue to monitor this region because we want to understand the exact role that glaciers play in the water cycle in the mountains. They provide a source of water in those months when there's not a lot of rainfall and when it's very dry. In this area in the Himalayas, there's lots of glaciers that are covered by a very thick layer of debris. And so we've been flying the unmanned aerial vehicle to try and map changes in those glaciers and, and figure out how much they're contributing to the stream flows. It's just another part of that water cycle. Conventional scientific wisdom says that debris-covered glaciers respond differently to climate change than clean ice glaciers because of a supposed insulating effect of the debris. But satellite data seem to suggest differently, and so do those from low-flying drones. Using the tools we have, the UAVs and the drones, we see that there's a lot of dynamics on the surface of this kind of glaciers. For example, we see a lot of supraglacial lakes and these huge ice cliffs. And we think now that these features, they accelerate the melt of this type of glaciers. And that could explain why debris-covered glaciers melt as quick as, let's say, clean ice glaciers. The team uses the EV, an unmanned aerial vehicle loaded with batteries, cameras, GPS and wind speed sensors and mapping the glacier inch by inch according to a specified flight plan. For every picture it takes, it knows exactly the position of the plane and the X and Y locations. And later on we use that information in the processing. We can get extremely high resolution data, get super detailed information about the glacier surface which you can't get from regular satellites. With the UAV, we can go into the field and we fly when we have good conditions and we get these incredible data sets that are now showing us how these glaciers, these debris-covered glaciers are changing. It's, it's really unique stuff. And may in fact really change the way how we study this type of glaciers because, I mean, we've seen it during this trip. Just, we've crossed one glacier and that took us over an hour. And that is only, let's say, 500 or 700 meters. But these glaciers, they are about 15 kilometers long. So if you want to study them really, really well, you have to come up with, with something. It's, it's really fun stuff as well. I mean, it makes me very nervous to fly those things. But. Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh... Five years ago, this technology would not have been available. Now, it saves time, money, and creates stunning images that can be used to determine changes in surface elevation and glacier flow rates. This kind of fieldwork is both draining and challenging, but it is also hugely rewarding in both scientific and human terms. Can you record smell too? Oh, man. And once we truly understand the hydrology of the Himalayas and what climate change is doing to it, we will be one step nearer improving the daily lives of millions of people. Not just in Nepal, but all the way downstream along the Indus, Ganges and Brahmaputra rivers. <laughs>